everyone. Welcome to Facebook Live Friday. Um, we're just waiting here for a minute for everybody to get on and get logged in. Um, but I'm really excited to have Donnie Lester with us today. He's the Vice President of Safety. And um, as always, if you're driving, please wait um, till you're not to watch this. You can always go back. And um, all right, so we're going to get started. As Raleigh said, welcome to Facebook Live. I'm Donnie Lester, Vice President of Safety and Security for Tri-State. And I have a lot of subjects that I want to talk about today. So hopefully I'll get through all of them. And the very first one I want to bring up is accidents. We seem to be having a lot of accidents and most of them are not real severe accidents. But again, all the little ones keep adding up and adding up and adding up. And Whenever I say little ones, I'm talking about striking a stationary object or backing into uh, a stationary object or striking an overhead object or actually following our GPS and getting lost and, and hitting some tree limbs or something like that. So anytime you're involved in an accident, please make sure you send in Macro 15 to alert the safety department that we have had an accident and also start taking some pictures get as many pictures as you possibly can of course uh, some of the accidents warrant you to call 911 however the ones where you just back into a stationary object uh, take enough pictures to tell the story in other words whenever whenever you get out and you start taking the pictures ask yourself if a stranger is looking at these pictures will this tell them the story of what happened in other words if there's another party involved to make sure you get all their information off their truck or off their car, get their license plates number, and whomever was driving the vehicle, make sure you get that information as well. And of course, Macro 15 will tell you what to do as you fill it out down towards the bottom. Uh, contact Kevin, uh, Zon in safety, or, or if you can't get hold of Kevin, get hold of Dan. If you cannot get hold of Dan, then call myself. Uh, we definitely need to talk to you. And while it's fresh on your mind, it would be good for you to write a statement because on a lot of these we need statements from our drivers. So go ahead and do a statement. So again, for accidents, that's macro 15. You cannot take too many pictures to, to tell the story of what happened. And again, uh, notify us, contact us immediately. So macro 15 for accidents. On spills, if you're transporting hazardous waste or even hazardous materials and you detect a spill or you think you have a spill, please call the safety department first. Uh, we've had some situations where the drivers actually called the customer and the customer will in turn call the safety department and we don't have a clue what's going on. So make notification to the safety department first and then we will make notification for you if we have to get an environmental crew out to do the restoration on it or whatever uh, cleanup is required, then we will make that phone call and do that. And also on certain spills of hazardous waste, we have to notify the uh, National Response Center. So we have to do a report. That's why it's very critical for us to find out about these spills. We must know about every one that, that we're involved in. So the macro is 24 for the spill reporting. So fill out macro 24 and give us a phone call. Let us know what's going on. Even if you think it's a potential spill, we don't want you popping the doors open and jumping up in the trailer. You need to consult with us first before opening the doors on the trailer. We will give you directions on, on how to proceed forward with it. Work comp, if you get injured on the job, then please give us a phone call because we're going to have you to call a company called MedCorp and they'll start the reporting process. So anytime you have a work comp injury, then make sure you give us a phone call and tell us what's going on and then we'll give you an 800 number for you to call. To MedCorp for them to start the reporting process. Okay, if you have an overage or a shortage or a damage of cargo, that is Macro 23. So again, fill out Macro 23. That'll give you instructions on what to do and then make contact to the safety department. Call Dan Stark or call Kevin or call myself to report the, the either overage or shortage or damage of, of a product. Okay, let's talk about permit books. I, and what the subject matter that I'm covering today are just some questions that I've recently been asked about. 
In fact, one of them was a permit book and they were trying to figure out, the driver was trying to figure out the difference between the green permit book and the black permit book. Well, the green permit book is actually the permits for your tractor itself and the black permit book is for all the hazardous material, hazardous waste permits. And every time you come into Joplin, please bring the black permit book in for us to update. I looked at one uh, just this week that had not been updated in a year. So I had quite a few permits that had expired in it. Luckily, the driver had not been checked by any authorities. So uh, again, we update the permit book. If you're going through your permit book and you have an expired permit, as far as hazardous material and hazardous waste, please call Karen Blevins and Karen can send you uh, the, the current permit. So again, keep your permit books updated. That's your responsibility as a driver. That's part of it. Update the truck permit book and update your hazardous material, hazardous waste permit book. Okay, shifting gears a little bit. Let's talk about hazardous waste manifest. That seems to be an ongoing problem. One of the biggest problems we're having with Hazardous Waste Manifest is transporter information. On the Hazardous Waste Manifest, if you have to annotate on that manifest, the transporter information, we are Tri-State Motor Transit Co. CO, period. So whenever you're putting the transporter's information on, whether we're transporter one, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever, then we are Tri-State Motor Transit Co. And then also you have to annotate our EPA ID number, which is MOD09503899 And that number stays always stays the same. It's not going to change. That's a facility assigned number. So as long as we are at 8141 East 7th Street, that number will remain the same. So again, if you're filling out that manifest as transporter, that's the information. Tri-State Motor Transit Co. along with our EPA ID number. Sometimes StairCycle will pre-print these manifests and StairCycle will list us as Bedrock Inc. doing business as Tri-State Motor Transit Co. And that's okay. That's, we'll accept that manifest like that because technically we are Bedrock Inc. So do not mark that out. I have looked at about 100 manifests the other day that had uh, Bedrock Inc., DBA, Tri-State Motor Transit Co. marked out and the driver put Tri-State Motor Transit Company in place of it. which he created about two hours of work for himself. So if you have any doubt, please give us a phone call, call your driver manager, call somebody in safety. We'll get you back on track of, of the proper name to put on the hazardous waste manifest. Another question that was asked the other day was, can you have non-hazardous waste on a hazardous waste manifest? And that answer is yes. You will see uh, material described on a hazardous waste manifest. You'll see uh, non-regulated uh, non DOT waste on a hazardous waste manifest. What you cannot have is hazardous waste listed on a non-hazardous waste manifest. That's what you cannot have. But as far as the hazardous waste manifest, the generator or the shipper can list just about anything on it that they want to. It's, it's a shipping paper to them. So in addition to hazardous waste, they'll put other uh, entries of hazardous materials or non-regulated material on the manifest. So another problem that we're having is continuation sheets. We can always send you a continuation sheet and you need a continuation sheet when you have more than two transporters or you have more than four line items. So if, there's, if you're going in and you're picking up the waste as a third transporter, you're going to have to have a continuation sheet. And be very, very careful about that because sometimes Tri-State is the second transporter and then we drop it at a drop yard. We go in to repower the load and the driver repowering the load thinks, oh, I'm the third transporter. No, not really because you're still working for Tri-State Motor Transit, so you're still the second transporter. So at that time, you do not need a continuation sheet. But whenever you do, if you don't have one, please contact the safety department we, or contact your driver manager. We can get you a continuation sheet. Okay, another issue that we're having is with bulk packaging. So when you look in the regulations, 49 CFR 171.8 is definitions, and you look at the definition of a bulk package, it basically says any package that you're putting a liquid into that has the capacity of 119 gallons. For a solid, it has the capacity of 119 gallons and the net mass of 882 pounds. 
So that's for the solids. So it doesn't say that that's how much material has to be in the package. It's simply that's the capacity of the package, 819 gallons or more. So the reason the bulk package is so important is uh, with the bulk package, you have to properly placard and mark that item that's in that bulk package. And we've had some confusion going on there because sometimes the Gaylord boxes, which are cubic yard boxes, and you would think that's a bulk package, but what they've done is they've used the Gaylord box as an overpack. And with that overpack, that is not a bulk package. It's simply an overpack. In other words, they've taken a lot of small packages, aka non-bulk packages, and placed them in the the Gaylord box, so it's still shipped as a cubic yard box, but it's still non-bulk package. So we've had some problems there where we actually displayed the placard with the ID number, and then DOT stopped us and checked it, and we were wrong. So try to keep that in mind whenever you're talking about the bulk versus the non-bulk. Okay, uh, one of our other bigger problems that we have is, is placarding and uh, placarding these vehicles. So when you look in 172.504, the regulations, and you look at Table 1, Table 2, and also there's some placarding exceptions to the rule, uh, and then you use the three steps to placard the vehicle for a, for a mixed load, then make sure you go through Table 1, look at that, Table 2, and with the mixed loads of hazardous waste, the Table 2 cutoff is 2,205 pounds, not a thousand one pounds it's 2205 pounds so that's a little bit confusing if you have a single hazard class from table two then you have to placard a thousand pounds or more however if it's in a mixed load then you placard it, that specific hazard class placard from table two at 2205 pounds so try to keep that sorted out and uh, and I will tell you right now on these load and tally sheets that you get from the customer don't always placard off of them you need to do your own load and tally sheet by looking at all the hazardous waste manifest and tallying up exactly what you have of each specific hazard class. And you got to take into consideration your secondary hazards as well because if there's secondary hazards from table one, then that's mandatory placards. So keep that in mind. Okay, attendance of vehicle. I think we've Sometimes we get Department of Defense freight and commercial freight confused. So attendance of vehicle, it's in your Federal Work Care Safety Reg book under 397.5, and it explains to you as far as commercial freight, it's talking about commercial explosives, and it's only going to address 1.1, 1 1.2, and 1.3 as far as attendance of the vehicle. And attendance of the vehicle means that you're up awake, sitting in the driver's seat or sitting in the jump seat or within 25 feet of the vehicle. I know the regulation says 100, but Tri-State says 25 feet. And we also uh, say with, with a secret shipment, a PSS shipment, then it's within 10 feet. And you must have an unobstructed view of the vehicle. So uh, you want to make sure that uh, anytime you have a 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 commercial shipment that you are in attendance of that. and we also encourage you with the 1.4, 1.5, 1.6 commercial loads uh, to attend them as well. Are you required to by the federal regulation? No, you're not required to, but we encourage you to attend them. So if you're stopping at a truck stop, you want to run in and grab something to eat, then you can do that. You just have to park in compliance with the regulations. In other words, more than 300 feet away from the building and stuff. So anyway, on the DOD freight, uh, it's all six divisions. Hazard Class 1 with all six divisions. Any of the government A, A, and E must be attended at all times. Again, you must be awake, dressed, up in the driver's seat or, or passenger seat, or within 25 feet of the, of the vehicle. So it doesn't mean that when you're sitting in the sleeper berth that you're looking at out both mirrors and that uh, means you're guarding a vehicle. That does not meet the definition of attendance of vehicle. So we've had a few situations where it's been reported that uh, the driver was actually in the sleeper berth trying to guard the load and that, that doesn't work. So again, if you have any questions on that, please give us a shout. Another problem we're having is cell phone usage or even text, uh, shooting text messages while you're driving a commercial motor vehicle. 
392.82 simply tells us that you cannot do that. You cannot be on the cell phone while you're driving the commercial motor vehicle. It also goes in the regulation tells you that even when you're stopped in a traffic jam, you cannot use your cell phone. So you have to find a safe place to pull completely off the road, get more than five feet off the travel portion of the highway. Once you've done that, then you can use your cell phone. And same with text, shooting text messages, you know, that's under 392.80, you cannot shoot text messages while driving a commercial motor vehicle or even while you're stopped in a, in a traffic jam or traffic delay or whatever. However, there is one time when you can, that's under emergency situation that you can use your cell phone to call for an emergency response or emergency help uh, situation. So again, the cell phone policy, Tri-State's policy is the same as the federal uh, regulations. You cannot do it. You know, you can use a hands-free Bluetooth if you have such. Another one that I heard the other day is a, a driver questioning about seat belts if you're a passenger. Well, the seat belts falls under the regulation of 392.16, and the, whether you're a passenger or driver, it simply tells us, uh, 392.16a tells us that the driver must use the seat restraint device while driving a commercial motor vehicle. And then it goes on to tell you the same in 392.16b that the passenger must also be restrained before you're allowed to operate the commercial motor vehicle. So. Again, both driver and passenger must use uh, seat belts. Same way with bunk restraints. When you're in the bunk, you should have your bunk restraints up or over, whichever one kind you've got. So remember, use your seat belts. We're getting ready to have a big inspection come up. So that's one of the things they're going to be checking will be seat belt usage. Smoking. Smoking in the vehicle. Can I smoke in the vehicle? The answer is no. Under 397.13, if you're transporting Class 1 explosives are your gases such as 2.1 flammable gas, hazard class 3 flammable liquids, uh, hazard class 4.1 flammable solids, and 4.2 spontaneous combustible material. You cannot smoke in the vehicle. And it says, it doesn't say if you're in the driver's seat, it just says on, on the commercial motor vehicle, you cannot smoke. So again, it's best not to smoke with any hazardous materials, but it doesn't address like corrosives or oxidizers or anything like that. It's simply addressing the ones that I mentioned. Hours of service. The biggest problem we're having with hours of service right now is not having the information, your onboard information, on the instructions that describes in detail how data may be uh, retrieved. So. Whenever the DOT officer asks you for your instructions to your hours of service, that's what he's looking for is that sheet that we give you and plus it's in the driver's manual on the instructions on how to restore and retrieve data. So again, that's one of the biggest write-ups on hours of service that we're having right now is the drivers cannot find their instruction sheet. Okay, roadside inspection blitz coming up June the 4th through June the 6th, and the focus is steering and suspension systems. That's going to be their focus, but also they're going to be checking. And I was in a meeting yesterday with a couple of, of uh, federal DOT officers, and they said they're really going to be focused also on seatbelt usage, and they're also going to be focused on fatigue and sickness. Uh, so in other words, they're going to be checking the drivers out to see if they're fatigued or if they're sick. And also, they're going to be checking for drug and alcohol impairment. So, keep that in mind, uh, especially on the seat belts. Use your seat belts. It is a federal regulation. And one of the things that they're going to be requesting from the driver will be the CDL with the proper endorsements. So, if you're transporting a tanker of hazmat, then you better have tanker endorsement and hazmat endorsement on your CDL. Also, they'll be wanting to look at your med card, and they'll be checking your hours of service, and they'll be wanting to look at the instruction sheet that I just mentioned a few minutes ago about on how to restore or retrieve data. Also, they will be checking for DVIRs, 396.11. So if you're at a roadside inspection, they write you up for something, make sure you send us a DVIR identifying that. Even if you fix it, even if you get it fixed there at roadside, we still want a DVIR to identify that you were written up for that. So again, the roadside inspection blitz is June the 4th through June the 6th, so be ready for it. And 
we have a lot of inspections anyway, so uh, they're already inspecting a lot of our trucks, but they'll have a, a bigger focus on June the 4th through June the 6th. And that's all I have for today. Okay, we did have one question real quick about um, an earlier topic. Josh Yates says, um, what about when we pick up loads from the drop yard of Waste Hazmat and the driver is not signing the paperwork properly? I, don't... I, I mean, I'd have to, that needs to be clarified a little bit, not signing it properly. Uh, we'll it's just... hard for me to answer because I don't know what he means by that, not signing it properly. Okay. I didn't know either. But I Tell Josh, I Josh can just call me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Thank you, Donnie. Thank you, everybody. You're welcome.